It was very hot. Um, we recorded the drums in the middle of summer, so it was 40 degree heat and we had all the doors and windows closed and um, we all sweated a lot. Um, and it was very noisy because there's just birds everywhere, cockatoos and parrots and um, kookaburras and, and then um, tractors and chainsawing and biplanes. So every time a plane went over, we all had to just stop and wait for the plane to go. And then if there was a car coming down the dirt track at the bottom of the hill, we have to wait for that. And so it was quite a challenge, but Christian was brilliant. He managed to do the recording um, without too much trouble. Oh, great. That's what you need on the back of your laptop. Where do you draw inspiration? from for your songwriting? Well, when I started writing, I was uh, stuck at home with this weird illness called fibromyalgia pain syndrome. And it was, I couldn't work and I couldn't go to university and I was in a lot of pain all the time. And But when I started writing songs, this illness became a complete blessing in disguise because I had all this time on my hands. And so, when I started writing, I was really writing about the world outside my window. I was in this very unusual position, you know, of being quite disabled and um, quite unwell. Um, and I was writing songs about the world inside my head as well. So it was quite um, an insular process, really. Uh, but over the years since then, I write a lot about other people. I'm fascinated by other people's lives um, and I find it kind of quite a natural thing to walk a mile in their shoes and write a song about them. And it's probably quite cathartic to have that creative process to be able to, to create something out of out of your pain because I imagine it'd be easy to become resentful if you were kind of stuck in a young body in a room yeah without any outlet I ended up just feeling really grateful though you know because it taught me so much about life and about how to deal with difficult situations how to make the best of things and I think when I started writing songs you know it, it, it were just perfectly combined poetry and music and uh, I realised it was just like I'd opened a door in my mind into a room where I just found all these wonderful things that I could do and I could enjoy so it wasn't something that was difficult it was something that was a complete blessing. What influence does your spirituality have on your music? It has a very profound influence. I've practiced Tibetan Buddhism now for over 20 years and although it's not something that I talk about that much, my teacher doesn't encourage it, thankfully. Um, and I certainly don't really talk about it at gigs. It's, it is there, you know, it's something that the philosophy and psychology of Buddhism is something that I've thought very deeply about and I've read a lot about. Um, and obviously doing my meditation practice as well. Um, so, of course, it comes out in the songs. It's there in so many of them. So this is our veggie garden. It's massive. I only actually planted sort of half of it. This half I haven't planted yet. I've got spring veggies that are growing from seed at the moment. 
You've been open about your struggles with bipolar disorder. And how does this affect your creativity? Well, it's it's something that I use really for creativity. I've 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 the manic episodes are incredibly sort of productive for me. I do write quite a few terrible songs while I'm high, but I can also come out with something that's, you know, a stayer, as I call them, you know, a song that will stay around and end up on an album and we'll play it at gigs and everything. And I might have written that when I was just completely off my head, you know. Um, so I find, you know, sometimes I get writer's block, particularly when I'm on the low side of the illness. That's illness, what is it? It's a condition. When I'm on the low side, quite often I can't write at all, and that's a horrible, empty feeling inside. But I've no, I know now from long experience that it will come back. It takes time, but it will come back eventually. Yeah, during those times when you're low and you're not feeling creatively inspired, I write terrible poems. <laughs> <laughs> but that, in a sense, is beneficial too. Right? Wow! Yeah. No, I just write terrible poems um, and sometimes bash out some chords on the piano and then go and make a cup of tea and feel sorry for myself. That's how I deal with it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you write your terrible poems um, at any particular time of day? First thing in the morning. I try and write something after my meditation practice in the morning. Um yeah, and then occasionally something, you know, an all right one comes out and it's a nice start to the day because I feel like I've done something creative before I get completely caught up with admin and marketing again, you know. There sometimes feels like there's little time to actually be a songwriter. So right, we run our own record label and there's just so much to do. I book all our gigs and promote them and stuff, so a huge amount of time is is taken up with that. I wanted to ask you was about the name of the album A Light to Follow, your seventh album. Um, I'm wondering why you chose to name it A Light to Follow and what that song means to you. Well, the song is really close to my heart because I wrote it about a friend who just been had a very serious diagnosis of cancer and I was gutted for her. And so I just put all this love and hope and concern into this song and I in the end you know when I was looking for a title for the album it was just the one that was to me filled with hope that was what I wanted to convey I want this I wanted this album to be full of light um, as a contrast I suppose to the one before a bit of blue which was came out of a very dark time in my life and I wanted a light to follow to be an album full of sunshine and full of hope as well. I mean, obviously there's, there are intense moments in it, there are dark moments in it, but generally overall, that's what I wanted the feeling of it to, to, to be like. to be real instruments, I wanted it to be real players, I wanted to have instruments mic'd up and I wanted it to be live, I wanted to do something a bit old school like we used to do in the old days with a tape machine and real players and microphones and a room and kind of use the computer more like a reel to reel tape than a computer with lots of clever tricks and pre-packaged sounds. Although well, and it's 
do that again. Two, One, two, three, four. You know, having Shane come up and mic up his drum kits and choose the snare and put the cymbals up and have to mess around with microphones and laugh about it as we're doing it, wondering if it's going to work and, and getting Dan in to play some slide guitar at the very end, you know, to put some sparkly stuff on it that kind of acted like a glue to hold it all together, to record the orchestral arrangements with the strings and the challenge of doing that with a violin, a viola and a cello and two people that could play them, but knowing that the charts and the scores were actually written and the people could really read them amazingly and, and then getting a performance from, from the players, those were real highlights for me. and the creative process, it gives you the greatest satisfaction. That moment, I think, when a song is born, you know, when you started off with nothing and you end up with something having been created, it's, there's no feeling like that. It's amazing. I just start off with a few chords on the guitar and the piano and then in the end there's a song and the good songs really do feel like they're being revealed. It feels like they're already written and I'm just revealing them. And that moment when the rhymes all work, the words all work and the music and the melody and it's all just right. There's just no feeling like it, it's just such a bug. There's so many steps to recording an album, especially when you do it live because not only do you have to come up with the plan on how you're gonna approach it, then you have to build the house and then you have to kind of finish it off at the end. Whereas when you're doing things kind of all programming, a lot of, a lot of the sound quality and the mixing elements are kind of almost taken care of as you go along because the, thing, the sounds that are pre-packaged already sound great. Whereas to take a kick drum and a snare drum and try and make them sound like they work or just wade through take after take of slide guitar to find the bit that's just got the magic. Um, those mm -hmm. things take time. Is there any merit to the idea that you have to be a tortured artist to create great work? I think the pain teaches you empathy and that's very useful. Certainly for songwriting, it's very useful to have an understanding, a really profound understanding of what that feels like. I think that in order to see the light, you need to have some sense of the darkness. So although I don't think being tortured, you know, all the time is awful, isn't it? But I certainly think having some understanding of suffering, because everybody has it, everybody experiences suffering at some point in their lives. And if you're going to walk a mile in their shoes, you need to actually have been there yourself. You need to really understand how that feels. hardest thing about making this album? I think it was probably managing the space because we recorded it at home in the shack and it's got like a cathedral ceiling and you know high gabled ceiling and it's like a small church hall and it was hit or miss it was either going to sound really great in the space or it was going to create a heap of problems and there were some things we did to mitigate potential problems to control the sound a bit, but there was always the possibility that it would just sound rubbish anyway. And we got really lucky because it actually is a very beautiful acoustic sounding room, even though it's also our home. And I heard that you had to build a makeshift TARDIS in your living room to also reduce the noise. Well, that was for the vocals, actually, because when we came to do the vocals, there was so much noise, background noise, already on all the other tracks. We thought if we had, if we had birdsong 
on the vocals it would just be a disaster so christian built this tardis out of um bookshelves and duvets and mattresses and he made this sort of black hole for me to sing in and it worked brilliantly it was great i had a camping light and my lyrics like pinned up on the on the inside and um that's where i stood and recorded all the vocals for the album how did you choose the songs for this album? Well, we originally started with a song list of 27 because um, we'd had a shorter list and then I wrote a heap of songs during a manic episode. So we ended up um, recording these 27 songs, all the instrumentation for them. But when we came to do the vocals, we'd had this huge TARDIS in our living room for about a couple of months and we were just totally fed up with it. So we thought, let's just um, make a short list. So I made a short list in about two minutes of um, 14 songs. What, what was the process of deduction like? It wasn't much of a process. I just went, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, and uh, sorted it out like that. So yeah. you have any emotional connection to any of the songs that you decided to... Oh, I had an emotional connection to all of them. Right. They were all pieces of my heart. But at the end of the day, I just instinctively said right that one or not that so one intuitively they kind of they fit it together yeah so exactly group of songs yeah yeah it's been a long time coming it's taken a lot longer than i thought it would take uh and i think that's been a good thing uh we had a few goes uh lost a few hard drives a few ideas went out the window that were definitely not my best work or emily's best work so I think the fact that we've had to be very patient has been a real bonus. The fact that we've had the time and the space to do it in um, has been a real blessing. Um, so now it's onward and upward with whatever comes next from it. This is the exciting bit now, I think, now that we've got it in our hand and people will start to hear it. Uh, what would you like your fans to make of this album? I would like them to feel uplifted, comforted and inspired. That's it. Then it would all be worthwhile. Go and seek out the sunshine.